Now, financial inclusion in Uganda has gained significant recognition through the recently launched National Financial Inclusion Strategy 2017-2022. As we count down to International Women's Day, we speak to the Executive Director of FSDU, um, Jacqueline Musitwa, on developing a more inclusive financial sector for women on Newsnight. Welcome, Ms. Musitwa, to NTV. Thank you so much, Rachel. And thank you for coming. Uh, let's start from what financial inclusion looks like. It sounds like a fancy word or a fancy phrase, but what does that look like? What does that entail? Ultimately, financial inclusion is ensuring that every person of age, and since the National Financial Inclusion Strategy, that is everyone above the age of 15, has access to formal financial services. So that's savings, that's credit, insurance and pension and our goal as FSD Uganda is to make sure that we help create a policy framework that makes sure that the laws are in place so people can access those services we also want to help make sure that innovators can actually have a strong and robust ecosystem where they can create products to support banks and other technology firms that are providing these types of services. All right, there was a survey um, that took place uh, according to the Financial Inclusion Insights Survey of 2016. Uh, it was revealed that women are less likely to use uh, mobile phones for starters and therefore they are not active users of uh, say mobile money. Actually the statistic is 38% of women, or rather of men versus 25% of women. Why is that and what are you doing about um, you know, bridging the gap? Unfortunately, those statistics are about right. The numbers might have changed in the past year and a half, but with our research and a lot of what we're hearing from our partners is there are a lot of social cultural issues that hinder women from one, not only owning phones, but two, when they do own phones, they don't tell people within their community, and that includes agents um, and other people that might be able to provide them financial services. So in a lot of our work, we do work with village savings and loans associations. And in the trainings that we do help to support partners, we do have honest conversations with both men and women to help them understand that phones are not agents of evil within the home, <laughs> but rather, as much as women save, under their pillows or under their mattresses, phones can equally be used as a tool that will help not only empower the women as individuals, but ultimately empower the family and help them reduce their vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of our work, we're focusing on education, but we are also recognizing that for social cultural issues, it's not only the responsibility of men or women, it's really a collective conversation that we need to have, that phones are good and used for positive can ultimately help families and the economy. All right. Um, speaking of the economy as FSD Uganda, you realize the importance of women or the impact of women on the economy. Tell us about the role of women on the economy. We're actually really excited about the statistics of the population of Uganda, in part because there are a majority of women. So we see that as one, a catalyst for greater growth. Now, there was a, a study that was done in 2016 by the MasterCard uh, Foundation that highlighted that Uganda had the highest number of women entrepreneurs in Africa. And so we like to use that statistic because it demonstrates that we're onto something and women do have the potential when they are in the right environment and given the right resources to thrive. And so from our perspective, one of the reasons that we do support women's financial inclusion is to make sure that we do create a conducive environment in Uganda where women can access credit, where women can save and ultimately grow their businesses and help contribute even more to Uganda's competitiveness. All right, sounds, sounds exciting. Um, the FSDU as well, um, you talked about the National Financial Inclusion Strategy 2017-2022. Briefly tell us about the objectives and where you have achieved um, so far. Well, it's very new, and so I think we are, it's still a work in progress. So in a couple of months, I think I'll be able to update you with more. 
But our support was really to Bank of Uganda and the Ministry of Finance to help come up with this strategy and really think through what we would like to achieve by 2022. The main objective is to make sure everyone is financially included. But part of that, beyond the numbers, is making sure that we do have adequate infrastructure. Because at the moment, if you go into rural areas, it's really hard to access connectivity, which means it's even impossible to access mobile money services and the like. So besides infrastructure, another area that we're really hoping will come out is access to a variety of, of services, including insurance. Insurance penetration is below 1% in Uganda. And so we are hoping that with bank assurance, and that um, regulation came out last year, and now with the strategy, we will be able to see more people insured. But I think lastly, it's really making sure that now that we have a course to follow, all of us take responsibility and are held accountable to these targets that we've set. All right. We are fast running out of time. Your final thoughts uh, as we look forward, of course, to celebrating Women's Day uh, come Thursday. What would you like um, those who are watching to know? I think our final thoughts um, from FSDU is really in line with this year's theme, really press for progress. It's really important for women to be included. It's really important for women to also bring along youth into financial inclusion. It's not only the role of men or women. All of us have a, a collective responsibility to, to make sure financial inclusion in Uganda happens. All right. Thank you so much for taking time to Thank speak you. to us. I've been talking to Jacqueline Musitwa, the Executive Director, FSD Uganda, on financial inclusion, of course, as we gear up for International Women's Day. And that was this tonight's uh, edition of Newsnight.